They didn't teach me this at my fancy university. So praise Lord for the internet. That's how I learned how to buy a business for zero dollars out of my own money. Now, a couple weeks ago, I made a video about how I purchased a business. If you haven't watched that yet, go after this video and go check that one out. It's pretty interesting. And I also made a video about the mistakes I made when buying that first business. Now, in this video, I'm gonna explain everything about how I bought that business for no money, which <laughs> it like is crazy, right? To be able to buy a business for none of your own money kind of blows my mind even to this day. Now, before we get started, if you want to learn more about how I got started and how you too can buy a business yourself, then I'll pop a link down in the description. Before doing any of the full courses that those guys offer, I suggest doing the $55 challenge. That's what I started with because that's a good way to see if this is something that you're interested in doing in general. I learned a ton on that challenge and it's a great way to see if this is something that you want to pursue. So juicy time. How did I actually buy a business for zero dollars? Actually, if I know the internet, I probably shouldn't be making this shape on camera. The memes might follow. So did I buy a business for zero dollars? The answer is yes and no, and I'll explain that in a couple of minutes. Now, there are many different reasons why business owners want to sell their business. And in this particular instance, the guy was selling his business because he was the CEO of a much larger business and he needed to spend time focusing on that because he can arguably make way more money on that business than he could have made on the business that he sold me. Also, the business that he sold me probably needed a bit more love, a bit more attention from someone a little hungrier, someone a little newer and earlier on in their investing career. That's someone being me. Also, because I got certain expertise like with the online marketing and the email marketing and stuff that perhaps the previous owner didn't have the time to put in for this smaller business. Now, the previous owner actually became the CEO of these brands a couple of years ago in 2019 when it was still owned by the founders. Now, since 2019, he has not been taking a lot of money out. He hasn't taken a big salary. He hasn't been paying himself lots of dividends. So this is known as retained earnings. He's keeping that money in the company. Now, why would he do that? Well, this has a lot to do with the different tax rates that apply. So I find tax stuff pretty interesting, but in case it's boring for you, I'll make this little part of the video as short as possible. Essentially in the United Kingdom and in lots of other first world countries, if he took a big salary, he would have to pay a lot of money in tax. If he took a large dividend, then he would still have to pay a pretty big amount of that dividend in tax as well. Now, rich people might use loads of different tax saving tricks, but one of the very basic ones is that they pay capital gains tax rather than paying tax on a salary or being paying tax on dividends. Now, capital gains tax in the United Kingdom generally is 20% unless it's on a property. If you're selling real estate, then it's 28%. So that means you retain the earnings in the business, you sell the business or you close the business down and then you only pay 20% tax on those retained earnings. Now there's something else that is pretty cool and that is called the entrepreneur's relief or actually it was called entrepreneur's relief in the UK. Now it's called the business asset disposal relief. And basically what this means is that up to your first million pounds, you only pay 10% tax on those earnings or on that sale value, which is pretty crazy. And it's a big difference between 10% and 20%. Now, if I understand correctly, you used to be able to claim up to 1 million pounds in entrepreneur's relief every year, but I might be wrong about that. But anyway, they changed that. So now it's up to 1 million in your entire lifetime. And that's still a lot of money. If you're paying 10% on 1 million, you are paying 100,000 in tax. And if you're paying the regular capital gains rate, you are paying 200,000 pounds in tax. So it's 100,000 pounds saving. And I'm still a small time entrepreneur, a small time investor, so 100,000 pounds sounds like a lot of money. There's obviously a massive difference between 10% tax and potentially 45% and up, which is what you would be paying if you were taking that money out as a salary or if you were taking it as a dividend, the highest dividend rate is 37.5. So huge incentives for entrepreneurs to keep the money in the company or sell the company and then be able to get a payday in which they pay far less tax. 
So the previous owner was gonna get a pretty good payday because he kept a whole bunch of those profits in the company and when selling it to me, would be able to benefit from that 20% capital gains tax rate. Now, in addition to taking out that money, he also wanted as part of the agreement, as part of the sale purchase, a deferred payment of 60,000 pounds over the next 12 months. Now, that essentially means that he's gotta get his 60 grand within a 12 month period. But that meant I didn't have to give him any money up front. I didn't have to go hand in pocket withdraw whatever attendees I had and hand them over to the previous owner. So strictly speaking, I bought the business for no money out of pocket. So I bought the business for zero dollars of my own money, but I do have to pay that 60,000 over the course of the first year. The magic is that the business profits can fund that deferred payment. So I just need to make sure that I don't drown the business over the first year so that the business profits can go towards paying off that deferred payment. And hopefully there'll be far more business profits than 60,000 in that first year. Now, a deferred payment is just one of the many ways that you can use to finance an acquisition. So comment down below if you want me to make a video outlining all the different ways that you can use and combine to make sure that a purchase of a business goes through smoothly without you having to put your hand too deep into your own pocket. Now, if this video inspired you on your entrepreneurial journey, make sure you press that like button and subscribe with the bell notification turned on if you wanna see more of these videos and be the first to see them when they come out. Also, don't forget, I'll post a link down in the description to the course where you can get started just like I did learning all this stuff from scratch pretty detailed and think the challenge only costs about $50. Now the YouTube algorithm thinks you're gonna like this video next, so check it out. I'll see you in there and let's hustle together.